As you all know, we have a villain this season whose first name is Joseph. He's a massive cult of personality and he's apparently been raised by a Russian-speaking lady who lights red candles. Add to that the cold climate of this alternate reality plus the fact that there's an explicit gulag reference in this episode and it becomes incredibly easy to liken Joseph Wilford to Joseph Stalin. Hi there mate, how's it going? It's Benji here and this is a breakdown and review of Snowpiercer Season 2 Episode 7 titled Our Answer for Everything. We go back a few weeks from where Episode 6 left off. We see the aftermath of 8 Breachmen getting murdered and Boscovich is devastated to have lost his co-workers and friends. Almost everyone including Boscovich thinks that the Tailies were behind the murders which leads to chaos as mobs gather to go after Tailies. This puts even more pressure on Detective Bestil to figure out who the real culprits were. I've been disappointed by her character and this investigation because she hasn't made any headway until now. Ataylee got her fingers cut off at the start of the season and Detective Till couldn't do anything about it, even though the answer was right in front of her. Luckily, she catches a break and finds an old-school Wilfred coat button next to one of the dead breachmen and she tracks it to this old Russian lady thanks to Osweiler. Turns out she used to be Wilfred's neighbor back in the day in Sheffield and she looked after him. She reveals that someone from first class traded a fur hat for a Wilford jacket and because of that, Detective Bestil is able to arrest her first killer. The killer is Saint Christopher Pendant and her admission that a new shepherd is coming gives away the true identity of her leader. It's Pastor Logan because he has given that same pendant to Detective Till and Breachman Boscovich. And he also talked about needing a new shepherd in previous episodes when discussing the train's future with Detective Till. I said in my previous videos that Pastor Logan was too obvious of a Wilford follower, so I didn't think he was behind the murders and I was expecting a twist. Because of that I was somewhat disappointed when they revealed him to be the man responsible for the murders. Anyways, Detective Till confronts Logan and when he realizes that there is no way out, he tries to off himself in order to take his secret with him to his grave. He wants two things, to protect Wilford and the chaos on Snowpiercer to persist. Because people think that the Tailies are behind the murders and if Logan reveals the truth, that could cause some trouble for Wilford. At the end of this sequence, we don't know if Logan is dead, he's close to it for sure, but Detective Till manages to stop this suicidal process. This self-sacrifice is a recurring theme in the episode, that's why I called it a cult of personality. People are willing to off themselves for Wilford. They believe in his mission to bring order to the next chapter of humanity. Logan says that they have to pay a small price at first to bring about a utopian society. It's ludicrous, yeah, it's insane, but it's not far-fetched. Masses have devoted themselves to a lot less important people in history, so so it's believable that they would sort of worship a man that sustained humanity. They know that they would be wiped out without his train. So I do think this storyline is plausible and I enjoyed it even though I wish someone else beside Pastor Logan was behind it all. Continuing with the cult theme, Wilford wants Audrey to prove her loyalty to him by repairing Kevin McMahon. I use the word repair on purpose because Kevin is no longer a person, he's almost like a tool, he doesn't have a mind of his own. I was surprised to see that he was alive by the way, and I wish he wasn't because I absolutely hated this storyline. It's not because it was objectively bad or anything, but it was remarkably uncomfortable to watch Audrey work on Kevin and literally turn him into a dog. The guy actually licked Wilfred's feet. I mean, what the frack is going on here? I sort of mentally checked out when that happened, even though I don't get affected too easily by what I watch or read in fiction. So I honestly don't want to talk about that anymore. We can discuss Audrey's motivation though, I don't think she's actually loyal to Wilford. I think she's playing the long game and she's gonna betray him but at the same time I think Wilford knows that and for some reason that I can't figure out he's letting her do this. I am relatively sure that Wilford's gonna use Audrey's betrayal to his advantage, I just don't know how. 
Meanwhile, the commotion on Snowpiercer leads to Pike getting captured. The mob wants to disarm him, they want to freeze his arm, but Leighton comes to his rescue and tells the mob to disarm him instead, which is a rather stupid move, isn't it? Do you really think giving the mob what it wants is gonna calm things down? I mean, how dumb can you be? That's the thing, they're making Leighton a bit too dumb. I get that he's out of his element, he doesn't know anything about power and how to wield it, but he didn't have to be this uninformed. Almost everything he's done this season has been disappointing, and I don't know how they're gonna redeem him as a character. I certainly don't think he will continue leading Snowpiercer, that's for sure. As for who could lead Snowpiercer, Ruth is kinda being groomed for that position. She's shown that she's loyal to the train. She tried to make amends for her past actions by apologizing to the little girl called Lights. And she convinced the mob that disarming Leighton wasn't gonna solve anything. And overall, she's turned into a more sympathetic character. I do like her character development, I love the way she apologized to Lights, but it was frustrating to watch her apology work because some things are just unforgivable. People watching the show can forgive Ruth, but the characters that she's hurt shouldn't accept her apology that easily. You know, when they were in the medical car, the Tailies couldn't care less about Ruth. I expected them to be angry with her, I wanted them to lash out to see how Ruth dealt with it, but that didn't happen. I believe that one of the best things about a character trying to make up for their mistakes is the realization that apologizing, feeling sorry and doing something about it isn't necessarily going to change the minds of people that you've hurt. The true measure of a good person is how they deal with that. Whether or not they continue to repent even though they know it's not going to make the people that they've hurt come round on them and like them. But with Ruth it felt like all was forgiven. The past is the past she's turned over a new leaf. That's what it felt like. Because of that I wasn't too happy with how this Ruth storyline turned out, but I'm still excited to see what's next for her. Alex was shut out of Wilford's inner circle for most of this episode, but she joined Wilford and Audrey in the very last scene when we saw the train turn around in order to go back and pick up Melanie. This looked incredible and it showed the enormity of Snowpiercer. I think it was the most visually pleasing scene in the show's history. There were a lot of train cars lighting red candles of course, they showed their support to Wilford and Wilford asked Sykes to prepare Icy Bob. So this support has convinced Wilford that it's the right time to mount an offense against Snowpiercer and take back his engine. As I have explained, overall this episode was a mixed bag for me. The lack of Melanie and the Kevin stuff made this a bit of an unenjoyable episode. The pastor twist was obvious, but it worked. I didn't like the way Leighton was written, and I thought Ruth's character development could have been handled better. Well, what did you think about this episode? Leave your comments down below, like this video if you've enjoyed this breakdown, and subscribe for more movie reviews and TV show breakdowns. That's it for now, take care and see you in the next video.